back in the late 1800s, when we were placed on reservations, they were prison camps in the beginning. And uh, this is a situation where we couldn't leave. We were not allowed to hunt. Our knives and guns were taken from us. And we were only allowed to eat whatever the American government gave to us, which was really no good food. The quality of the food was okay when it left places like Chicago and stuff like that. But once it got to some of these train stations between there and the reservation, a lot of these handlers would sell it. And then they would buy old food and put that in there instead, and these middlemen would make a lot of money. So what we got on a reservation was bullshit food. It was really no good. And we ended up getting all kinds of diseases like uh, heart diseases, hypertension, diabetes, things like that. And then at the same time, our language and ceremonies were declared illegal by the United States. So we were hit physically, spiritually, and emotionally. Soon after that, our minds became weak. These are the four parts of the South. So with the four parts of the South being sick, we lost our connection to our sacred center. So we started to focus on communicating away from that. And then the priests came from the various churches, and they learned our ways and said that since our ways conflict with the Bible, that our ways are evil, that they come from Satan. They come from the devil. So in our weakened state, we slowly began to accept that. Now, another thing is that there were some Lakota people that didn't want to accept that. They wanted to hang on to the traditional Lakota star knowledge ways. And if they revolted, they were sent to a mental hospital in Canton, South Dakota, which was set up for all reluctant Indians in America that did not want to become Christianized. They were sent there. And these church priests also committed the medicine men, medicine women, holy men, holy women. They committed all of them to these mental asylums too. This way, the people would not go to them for help, that they would come to the churches. They wanted the Indian people to only go to the priests and not their traditional healers. So they sent the healers to this mental asylum to die. And if you are radical, you were sent there to die too. So while this is happening, the priests are saying to Indian people, if you believe our way, we will help your children. And so it was a very, very dire straits time. And so a lot of Indians became Christians because of that. Like I said, we were weak-minded too at that point. And those who stuck it out, there were people who refused to accept Christianity, but they went to church anyway. What they were doing was they were putting up a candy store front. On the outside, they were acting like good little Christian Indians, but on the inside, they weren't. They were star knowledge people. They did this because they didn't want to get sent to that mental asylum to die. That's sad, isn't it? But that's part of what happened back then. And it's because of these people who maintained this knowledge in secret. Thanks to them, they passed it down to certain people like me. And we still have this knowledge and I'm sharing it with you because this regards the sacred center and we all have that this is not a Lakota thing this is a Ikche Oyate thing Ikche Oyate means human being when you live this way you communicate as a human not as a Lakota not as a German or a Japanese or an African you communicate as a human. That's really important to know. So, 
that's how it was back then. Now, remember I said that the, the priest said to the Indians, we will help your children. So, they took the children away from the parents, sent them to boarding school hundreds of miles away, where these children were tortured to speak only English and learn a civilized Christian way. If they spoke about home, they were tortured. These schools didn't do background checks in those days. The pay was really low. So they got really no good teachers in these schools. A lot of these teachers were sadistic. They got sexual pleasure from torturing people. And here, this is like summer holiday camp for them. And the same thing for perverts. A lot of perverts now had their pick of the litter. And they could get away with it. That's what happened. A lot of these children were murdered. They were killed. They were raped. They were molested. And there's a lot of unmarked graves near these schools. Not all of these children are accounted for. So, those who made it through, what they learned was whatever they saw. Because a lot of these children never went back home. They were told by the priests that their families had died and that there was nobody there. And that broke their hearts. This is why some of these children, they were so sad, they couldn't eat. And they ended up starving themselves to death. And those who made it through, like I said, they didn't really survive because they were not able to process all these emotional traumas that they experienced. They didn't know how. Because the only adults that were around them were these unhealthy, abusive people, teachers, dorm matrons, cooks, janitors, priests. They were all unhealthy to them. That's all they knew. They learned how to become victims, and they learned how to become abusers to those who they considered weaker than themselves. So they didn't really survive. A lot of these children that made it through these schools, they had a lot of traumas that they didn't know how to deal with because all they saw was abuse. That's what they learned. They had, there was no adult healthy role models to emulate. And remember I said these children were told that their families were all dead. So they didn't go back during summer holiday. They just stayed at these schools and worked. So when they left these schools, they tried to live in mainstream America. Nobody accepted them. They would say, ah, you're a heathen. You're a dirty Indian. So they couldn't even get jobs off the reservation. And when they went back to the reservation, to their people they ran into more problems. Many, many times they were not even accepted by their own people because their own people were saying, oh, you're too white. You act like a white man. So they're caught in between. So a lot of them turned to alcohol to try to hide all of it, to try to forget everything. They turned to alcohol and then later drugs. There were some who tried to make it. They married each other because they knew each other went through the same thing. And they didn't want their children to go through what they went through. So they didn't teach them the language. They didn't teach them the culture. Those children, the children of these first generation boarding school people, those children are today's elders. When they were born, they didn't learn the language. They didn't learn Lakota Star knowledge. They never got the opportunity to. When you look at an old person on the reservation today, 
they're not the connection to the ancient past. No, they were born in a Christian background. At a time when the reservations were strongly Christian. So this is what happened. That's a native experience that a lot of people don't realize. And this, is, this is what happened all over America. And Canada too. So the next generation. They are sent to boarding school too. No choice. It's a little bit better but they're still abused. They're still getting treated really no good. And so they grow up, have children, and they don't teach their children anything. What what can they teach them? They don't know anything concerning their own language. This is why today most people cannot speak their own language. And what little cultural information they know is Christianized. Meaning... It's dualistic, and it's not the original ancient form. Okay, so the first generation of Indian kids that were sent to boarding school, since all around them were unhealthy adults who did nothing but abuse them, they didn't receive healthy parenting. They missed things that they should have learned about life. So they're lacking emotional development. So when they grow up, and those who make it through these boarding schools, and then they they have children, those children are also lacking that emotional support, that emotional development. Because the parents don't know how to do it. All they knew and all they learned was abuse. All they experienced in these schools was abuse. They have a hard time trying to be a healthy parent. So they do the best that they can. But the children still are not receiving the proper emotional development, the the experiences that, that healthy children should receive from healthy parents. They're still missing that. And so when that second generation grows up, they know even less concerning healthy parenting. And so their children receive even less. And every time this happens, the next generation becomes more dualistic than the previous one. So let me try to say that again. The first generation boarding school kids, they didn't receive proper parenting skills. So when they have children, their children are not receiving healthy training that they should be receiving. They're receiving even less than their parents. Now that second generation, when they grow up, see, they know even less. So when they have children, those children are are receiving even less. And it gets worse with each generation, which also means that the less healthy emotional development they receive, the more dualistic they become. So with each generation is more becoming emotionally underdeveloped, they are also becoming more dualistic. So today, it's a huge mess on the reservation. As a whole, We're incredibly underdeveloped emotionally, and we are incredibly dualistic. We're quick to attack each other. We're quick to pull each other down. We're just like the rest of the civilized, dualistic world. Notice I didn't say white man, because this is all over the world. It's not just among white countries. It's all over the world. Wherever there is a dualistic ideology where one gender is considered less than and property of the other gender you're going to have incredibly underdeveloped emotional people which equals incredibly dualistic
people. And that is unhealthy. So that started by the time of the late 1800s on the reservation. To read more about Lakota Star Knowledge Spirituality, you can read my book called Wichoha Otechike. This book contains the information to what I talk about on my Lakota Spirituality videos. You can see the book cover on the screen now. In the description below, there is a link to see my books. As you will notice, it's an eBay link. There's two of them, and either one will work. And there you can get the information to get this book. How? Lila Pilamaelo. Thank you very much.